Today marks the one-year anniversary of the first case of COVID here in the United States. In the following year, 400,000 Americans have lost their lives to this one virus. Think about that. 400,000 souls gone like that. They were people's grandparents, husbands, wives, children, their friends, family, and loved ones. How many of those 400,000 Americans died without knowing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? How many of those 400,000 Americans sat in church pews Sunday after Sunday and still didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Oh, they had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. How many of those 400,000 Americans never came to know Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, because nobody preached the true gospel to them? Nobody demonstrated true Christianity to them. How many of them never heard the gospel preached to them because the church has been too busy arguing whether we should wear a mask or not, whether we should have the right to gather to worship or not, or even if the virus is real or not? How many of these souls perished because we cared more about our opinions, our rights, and what we want over what Jesus commanded us to do. Food for thought. Jesus wasn't joking around when he gave us the Great Commission. He wasn't kidding when he said, Go forth into all the earth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He wasn't arbitrarily speaking when he said, Go forth and preach the gospel to every creature. If you are not doing that, you are walking in disobedience to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, to God. You cannot say you're a Christian and not obey the Great Commission. Period. I'm sorry if that offends you. Not really. But that is the truth. Jesus said the only ones who will get into heaven are the ones who do the will of the Father who is in heaven. Yes, salvation is free. You can't earn that. Jesus took care of that. But we, he didn't die so we had magic fire insurance. He died for us to empower us to be his witnesses to all nations. To win more souls for the Lord. Not so that we could argue over stupid and arbitrary things that have no eternal consequence. Stop it. People are dying. We should be broken hearted. We should be spiritually ripping our clothes and mourning that people have died. 400,000 Americans have died. And that's just in this country. Why are we not mourning as a church? Why are we not in spiritual sackcloth and ashes repenting of our evil ways and asking God to forgive us and end this plague? To end this pandemic. When did we become so selfish that our rights are more important than taking up our cross and following Christ and living by his example? It's time to end the coffee house Christianity. It's time to stop saying you're Christian but living like the devil. People's lives are at stake. Their eternal fate is at stake. Wake up church. What else God does God have to do to get your attention? It's time to stop playing games. It's time to be about the Great Commission. Either you're for God or you're against God, but there is no middle ground. It's time for us to rise up and be like our teacher, like our Lord and Master, and be servants of all, not benefactors who lord over people. If you haven't accepted your Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the hour of salvation. Now I beseech you by the tender mercies of God, 
Do not harden your heart as in the days of rebellion, but soften your heart and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He loves you so very much. Don't put it off. If there's one thing this virus has taught us is you can't count on there being a tomorrow. Church, go about the Great Commission. Those of you seeking the truth, come to Christ and he will set you free. And then get yourselves a Bible and read God's word and be in God's word and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how to apply it to your life. All right? I love and care about each and every one far too much not to tell you the truth. And this is what God told me to share with you. You have a great day.